a program director, a DDG Zolisi Doni, Dr. Bakasel, a DDG for policy in the department, Antonio Speck, the national executive director of a South African National Council for the Blind, Mr. David Roderick, manager of Tima College, Mr. Lux Madoto, deputy chairperson of the Disabled People South Africa, Philip Dicklek, Bogan Ngadla Malaj. Good morning to the students and other uh, officials from government. Firstly, let me thank our officials for deciding that we have our launch here. But also say that uh, our deputy minister is uh, abroad, has gone to talk about the issues uh, of older persons, senior citizens. She would have been here to launch the disability month. Why uh, I'm thanking our officials? It's because most of the time we want to launch uh, our activities far from the constituencies content. And uh, today we are here. And also, I think uh, this is going to help us send the message to all South Africans, to all families, to mothers and fathers, so that uh, they understand that we have uh, this college. But also, I want uh, to thank the Deputy Minister for taking up uh, the matter of the college when it had uh, problems and she was able to raise um, 20 million that's going to be used over a period of three years. Um, and I think um, we must ensure that there is funding continuously. This is going to ensure that our young people don't uh, get uh, frustrated if they have to make their choices. And uh, you are able to make your choices if you are met halfway. So, Tina, our responsibility is going to be a, uh, why uh, didn't you go to school? Because the schools uh, will be there and they will are going to be strong and uh, also have a strong foundation. South Africa celebrates Disability Rights Awareness Month annually on the 3rd of November to the 3rd of December. And this day gives us an opportunity to reflect on progress made in realizing the rights of persons with disabilities as equal citizens, as well as to take notice of new challenges that are emerging which require attention. The activities uh, during this month, we want to use uh, this month to increase awareness about the rights of persons with disabilities mm -hmm. as equal citizens among society in general and demonstrate government's commitment to the promotion, protection, and upholding of the rights of persons with disabilities by removing access and participation barriers to social economic opportunities and justice by strengthening the representative voice of persons with disabilities. But I also think it's not uh, only our responsibility as government to do that. When you want a people to respect you, you also go back and look into where you come from. You look at the pioneers of your struggle. And I think it's important uh, 
for us as the disability sector to do the same. Let's talk about uh, Sis Maria Ranto. And there were others before her, and that is why uh, she was in parliament. She would not have been there if uh, people with disabilities did not fight for a representation in decision-making structures. Obabu Friday Mavuso. We need uh, to celebrate those lives because we are where we are because of the decisions they take or they took of not being represented by other people on their issues. <laughs> the 2015 Disability Rights Awareness Month coincides with the country's celebrations of 60 years of the Freedom Charter. And the Freedom Charter continues to guide and inform the transformation path of our beautiful country, of building a South Africa that belongs to all who live in it, black and white. A South Africa that belongs to girls and boys, men and women with disabilities who live in it. The Disability Rights Charter of South Africa released in 1992 by Disabled People South Africa in consultation with other major organizations explains the Freedom Charter and its relevance to persons with disabilities living in South Africa and subsequently informed the development of the Integrated National Disability Rights Strategy released by government in 1997. But also, we must say that uh, though uh, we are not uh, shouting, any reasons uh, for not shouting is that we also feel uh, we are far behind as government when it comes to the issues of people with disabilities. And we also know that the president has prioritized the issues of people with disabilities. The white paper is on its way to cabinet. And a lot has been uh, written on uh, people with disabilities. And I must say that uh, continuously we are learning. Firstly, as a cabinet, members of parliament, departments, on how to deal with the issues of people with disabilities. And on a daily basis, in our uh, department, Deputy Minister uh, Henrietta takes us through the issues of persons with disabilities. The department that is given the responsibility of dealing with the issues of people with disabilities, okay? We have employed a uh, people with disabilities. And uh, when it comes to that, we are one of the departments that are performing very well, but assistive devices were not in our minds. Secondly, there are those that uh, need a guide, and uh, everyone, when you commit to implement policies that have to do with persons with disabilities, your budget must accommodate assistive aid devices and uh, those uh, who need a uh, guide, that must also be accommodated. And what does this mean? It means we are learning and we are prepared to continuously learn and not only learn and implement uh, programs that uh, have to do with uh, persons with uh, disabilities. Persons with disabilities enjoy uh, protection against discrimination on the basis of disability and the right to substantive equality and dignity as enshrined in the Constitution of the Republic. 
and we've seen a number of court judgments that entrench these rights. Since 1994, representation of persons with disabilities has increased in various decision-making positions. We have a number of judges and magistrates with disabilities, while Parliament has more than 10 members with disabilities. But that does not end the representation. If you are represented in the structures that make decisions, one of the things you have to take into consideration is to keep on consulting with your constituency so that uh, in the process of your work, you prioritize their issues. Like women, we want our issues to be prioritized. And we try and ensure that uh, they are not uh, left uh, behind and also that they are not ghettoized. Because once the issues uh, get ghettoized, you are the only ones who discuss uh, those issues. What we need to do is to have a very strong mobilization of communities on such uh, issues so that the family in Bula, in Kokstad, is able to present their children to relevant uh, structures if they are disabled. Bulwa is one of the areas where family members lock in their kids or family members with uh, disabilities. We found out uh, through our Mikonzo program, because uh, we visit uh, families, we talk at uh, communities about challenges that are facing our people in general. One other thing, it's not only the departments uh, of education and social development and health that have to look into the issues of people with disabilities. Human settlement was spoken about. And uh, what is it that uh, we have done as people with disabilities to look into houses that were built uh, by government before and uh, we have uh, people with disabilities staying there. Because also it's our responsibility to have a database of uh, where our people stay, but also it's our responsibility to meet with the Department of Human Settlement, sign an MOU that is going to ensure that wherever we have people with disabilities or wherever human settlement is a building houses, this has to be taken into consideration. But we are not going to end there because everyone signs a MOU. We are going to monitor that so that uh, everyone can account on the work that they are doing because we all uh, need uh, to account. One other uh, department that I think is important is the Department of uh, Economic Empowerment, the sheltered uh, employment uh, centers. There is a lot of work that is being done there. And I've been saying, why are we not uh, forming cooperatives? So that uh, people with disabilities on their own have a structure that is going to deal with this. And then uh, you cut uh, the middlemen so that uh, people with disabilities earn proper salaries they have challenged us in a number of times. They have uh, said to us, we have minds, we can think, 
and we want a proper jobs. So let's also uh, take that into consideration. And uh, here is uh, Mr. Tony here. I've raised uh, the issues with him. Universal access is important in this regard. And by that we mean the removal of cultural, physical, so social, and other barriers that prevent people with disabilities from entering, using, or benefiting from the various system of systems of society that are available to other citizens and residences, residents. The absence of accessibility or the denial of access is the loss of opportunities to take part in the community on an equal basis with others. Persons with disabilities also have full access to bus rapid transit system in our main centers, which have been developed on universal design principles. Optima College is a perfect example of providing universal access to technology for blind and partially sighted persons. This concept is premised on encouraging and developing the skills for self-sufficiency with a focus on eliminating need for charity or welfare in individuals and groups. From a disability perspective, this means empowering or developing the skills and abilities amongst persons with disabilities. They are caregivers to effectively communicate their social economic needs to others in society. Ladies and gentlemen, government is committed to ensuring that all persons with disabilities enjoy the right to represent themselves in decision-making processes and structures as well as in advocating for their rights. And this requires of us to create accessible platforms for consultation, including alternative platforms for persons who find it difficult to self-advocate in large meetings, to put measures in place to reach persons with disabilities who live in deep rural areas, who are some, who are homeless, or who have been displaced, as these groups often do not have access to existing consultative platforms. We are working with disability organizations to strengthen this, this area of our work. Persons with disabilities can and do contribute to the development of their communities, their schools, their workplaces, and to the country as taxpayers. Empowerment is therefore identified as a core cross-cutting theme for enabling persons with disabilities to avail of and access all socioeconomic development opportunities and rights that exist. Internationally, research has shown that disability exclusion is not only an individual human rights issue, but also a developmental concern. The International Labour Organization estimated in 2009 that South Africa loses about 7% of its annual GDP due to exclusion of people with disabilities from the workplace and the subsequent productive, uh, productivity loss. Children with disabilities were not welcome in ordinary schools prior to 1994. Today, children between the ages of 7 and 15 have to attend school by law. This includes children with disabilities. Our education policies make it clear that children with disabilities should be accommodated in local schools 
and that they need to be provided with the support they need. But also, this needs talking to parents, making them ready to allow their kids to go to school. But also, even at school, there must be mobilization because we know how children are, more particularly from early childhood development level. They have many questions and we need to help them to understand people with disabilities. But also, it's not only uh, kids that have challenges. Even adults do have challenges. Impatience. There's only one school that I've visited where I think there is integration, proper integration. The school we visited, Sondo, with the president. Yes, that's one of the schools where even uh, kids, other kids generally in the school, understand sign language. So those are very advanced people that we don't understand. Actually, uh, the principal of that school must be amongst the people that we value and the teachers because of the decision they have taken. This is the time for us to account. How many kids are in uh, tertiary institutions? How many uh, could not attend because of lack of access in tertiary institutions and lack of assistive uh, devices in those uh, tertiary institutions? Deputy Minister A. Henrietta took a long time trying to introduce, working uh, together with uh, other uh, comrades, relevant methods of teaching in Pretoria. Now, what about other uh, institutions of higher learning? And are we prepared as government to fund guides for people with disabilities in institutions of higher learning? If we say they must go to school, well, they can go to school, but have we made conditions for them to go to school? Have we dealt with our attitudes? Or we want uh, to always a uh, plead uh, innocence and uh, introduce Molanyana uh, things. And our responsibility as the department is to provide services to people with disabilities. So I think these are all uh, the issues we have uh, to talk about. Children uh, with uh, invisible uh, disabilities those with disorders, how many of them do we have throughout the country? What have we done to ensure that, for instance, they are given more time to write exams? We need uh, to try and perform beyond the expectation. We, South Africa is a developmental uh, state but we must try and do what uh, we are capable of doing. The things I'm talking about uh, today are things that uh, we can do. They are practical, but we always uh, put uh, hurdles ahead of us. And uh, you won't even uh, go uh, to various areas. You will go uh, to the Department of Education go to ECD centers, go to uh, many other institutions and organizations 
that work with people with disabilities and you will have a good starting point. I thought I should raise these things here so that everyone understands that we are not doing anyone a favor. We have responsibilities and from here we need to have a proper program of action and there is a booklet that we are supposed to be launching this month that uh, was that came out of the ministerial uh, advisory committee which has been pre presented to us we then asked uh, the committee to come up with the programmatic uh, areas and uh, the phases of those uh, programmatic areas. We also know that uh, Disabled uh, People South Africa will be hosting a disability convers conversation roundtable on housing, accommodation and assisted living versus residential facilities in Bumala so as to provide a platform for dialogue on accelerating the pace towards the development of alternatives to residential care for persons with disabilities, require, requiring safe shelter support as well as personal assistance. Again, this should not be taken as a privilege, it is a right. The role of the private sector in creating an equal society will be under spotlight when the South African Human Rights Commission launches the Disability Toolkit and Monitoring Framework in Johannesburg at the end of November. The National Development Plan notes that disability must be integrated into all facets of planning, recognizing that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Disability Rights Awareness Month 2015 will strive to make it easier for rights holders to hold public servants accountable by making contact information of key managers available and accessible. But also, we hope that uh, we will be presenting a program of action that uh, we are going to be uh, embarking on as at the end uh, of the campaign to the campaign next year so that we account properly on what uh, we have done. There are a few other things that uh, I would like to raise. The issues of the care dependency grant. We, oh, we have a challenge at the care dependence grant, some uh, of the parents do not understand that uh, there is such a grant. So we need to try and uh, ensure that we drive a campaign through SASA that's going to inform uh, parents about uh, the care dependency grant. But also, two years ago, we visited a family in Msinga where everyone is um, mentally disabled, mother, father, and the kids. So we visit them. They are living under difficult conditions. They have built their own huts using stones and cement. Now, they were no longer uh, getting their pension because they did not renew. And then uh, I talked to them and at the beginning they listened very carefully and uh, they liked that uh, we were there. They showed us uh, their rooms that are very clean. And then the war started. I then uh, said, uh, uh, social workers uh, have told me that they've, coming, they've been coming to pick you up for uh, 
the renewal of your grant. And then uh, I've come to ask you to go uh, to our offices uh, tomorrow. And they agreed. On our way out, the man said, you know what? The one who stopped my grant is going to renew it. <laughs> I'm not going there. And I said, oh, but you've just uh, agreed that you will be going there. She's, he said, no, I'm not going there. They must uh, renew it and bring my money. I want my money. All of a sudden, and the wife uh, tried a uh, shame to uh, bleed uh, with the husband. And then later uh, on our way, uh, I said to social workers, but why uh, actually do these people have to renew? Because uh, they've been uh, to hospitals, they were, we know their history. They've been getting a grant uh, for so many years. The status has not been changing. Why uh, do they have a uh, to renew? We then uh, asked uh, our social security branch to look into that. It, it's very awkward. It's also senseless because uh, they, you read the diagnosis and then uh, you see that uh, this person uh, deserves a permanent grant. The only thing that uh, you could do is to go maybe after two years and check if the person is still alive. One other thing that uh, we must focus on, I think uh, throughout uh, the year, is uh, the issue of persons uh, with albinism. And there must be a very radical campaign. Mina once uh, told uh, Sister Masol Buti, where I come from, I was told that uh, those people just vanish. They don't die. But also, there is something that has come up, the issues of mood. So we need to drive a radical campaign on this. And uh, one other thing is this, uh, that more young women are killed, which means that uh, the whole thing has elements of patriarchy, discrimination against uh, women, violence against women and children. So when we do our work on a daily basis, we must take up the issues of violence against uh, women and children with disabilities. There are many people with disabilities that are very bright and people feel threatened about that. And we must make sure that on a daily basis we remind them that they are like any other person. They must not feel ashamed of raising their issues. I hope you've also checked on the side of our young people that are at tertiary institutions. How have they dealt with the business for? Because you are everywhere. So you need to behave that way. Lastly, let me thank uh, my team for the work it has done. More particularly, uh, Lydia, she's done a lot of work when it comes to uh, policy de uh, development. And we've fought uh, a lot uh, with her. But uh, every day when uh, we meet, uh, she meets me with a smile. I thank you very much.